Okay, so I am becoming fearful that if things don't change, Robin and Giselle are not going to be friends. Like, there's going to be a wedge at some point that really comes between them because there is a respect issue in that friendship. <music> I'm like, come on through, cook, yeah. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season four, episode 14. And like I was saying, there's a there's a respect issue in that friendship and it gets old. I've been in a friendship more than, you know, more than enough times where you let your friend ride and you let your friend slide and you, oh, that's them. And you, you do this thing with them and then it just gets to a point where it's old and it's tired. And then, you know, it just tears away at the friendship. Um, and I don't know. It's a certain type of personality trait that people have. And Robin has it. And I have it. Where you you give. You know, you give to the first. You, you give of yourself to the friendship. And you let things slide that you wouldn't normally let slide with people who you don't consider a friend. And are you wrong for letting the thing slide or are you wrong for getting tired? Because generally what happens once you get tired, people kind of see you as the one who's wrong because it's like all of a sudden, but it really isn't all of a sudden. You have given until there's nothing left to give. You just are plum tuckered out of the bullshit. And I see it and it's coming with Robin and Giselle. I'm y'all keep watching. I listen, I know it too well. I've done it. It's years after years. You know, there's people who I've let them slide for years. And then one day I just say, you know what? Enough. Enough with you. Ain't nothing to repair. Let's just be done with it. And I mean, I'm talking friendships that have lasted 15, 16 years. And one day I wake up and I'm just like, I'm done with it. I don't feel the need to explain myself. You were there. I was there. You know what happened. I know what happened. And I can go back to times and so can you. So ain't no need to go back and forth about it and nobody telling you you seen it wrong and all that bullshit. But this is what I see with them. And we're going to get into it as we go through this review. But we'll get to that when we do. Now, Ashley. Ashley, we left off last week. Ashley was right there in the, the driveway in the yard of her dad's house. She went on up to the door. Her, her aunt and her uncle, the mom, maybe her dad opened the door, looked at her, scowled, honey, and closed the door and locked it and closed the door in her face and locked it. And then the uncle was rushing them to get on off the man's property. So I said, is he not stable? Because that's the way it seemed, like he wasn't stable, like he might come out and get the shooting or something. He kept saying, let's just get off his property. I was like, listen, Ashley, there ain't another tear to drop over him. Any man that will just shut the door, man or woman, that just shut the door in your face, they don't deserve for you to drop a tear, not near another tear over them. To hell with them. That's it. You talk about, you know, she said, I got the closure I needed, but you keep crying. You keep crying. I understand you're hurt, but it gets to a point where self-worth, self-worth, damn them. Cared nothing about your feelings. Cared nothing about how you felt about what he was doing. It's rude. It was rude. It made no sense. You laid down with that woman and made that baby, and now you. 
he don't deserve another tear to drop over his raggedy, wretched, raunchy ass. And that's it. That's all I got to say about that. I just, I, I was so over that. I was like, wow, terrible. Him and Kenya Moore's mother, baby, there's no way, no way, no excuse. There's nothing they can say to correct that. No excuse. Y'all ain't shit. Moving on. So, Robin and Giselle were out looking. Now, uh, Robin's looking into going into a trucking business. And I was like, okay, Robin. I, I guess. Why not? Just that's as good as any, I guess. You know, she seemed like she's done some research and everything. So, they were out there. They had a good time driving the truck and all of that. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, then we saw Karen sit down with her sister, Bridget, and they basically went out and did a balloon release ceremony for their parents. Um, and they basically played Raven's song and they, um, Karen had the, I think the father's Bible and the sister had the mother's Bible or vice versa, but they had the, the parents actual personal Bibles and they had all these pretty white balloons and they went ahead and they released it. So I said, well, I guess that's it. Um, definitely a creative, um, cause I've never seen that before. So it's a creative way of, I guess, ending your grieving process. You know, or or going toward the ending of the grief, like you're letting it go, like this is it, like this is it, this is the final piece of this. I'm letting this go. I'm letting you know. I'm 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 letting this go. You know, so that was interesting. That was interesting. It was beautiful. It really was. It was beautiful. Um, I don't know how authentic it actually ends up being when you're trying to do it on camera, but the whole thought of it, it I thought was. Beautiful. Well, anyway, moving on. Monique and Chris. Am I the only one who gets a headache over at their house? Am I the only one who gets a headache over at their house? Like, it's not, it's beyond my control. So, I watch the show, so I'm forced to go over to their house for visits. But, like, honestly... As a person, I would never go to their house for a visit. Their children are just out of control. Their children just have no damn chill. So they're there having this CPR class. And them kids, child, mm -mm, they got to work on them. They just don't know how to sit still and stop. Just stop. And the little boy, there's no excuse. He's school age. He is school age. He needs to already be trained and know how to sit down and shut the hell up. And little girl, Milani, I, I don't know. You know, you can still be working with her. But the little boy, there's no excuse. And I feel every time we film at their house, I feel like I'm being forced into a visit to somebody's house that I don't want to go to because their kids is out of order. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But that, oh, oh, that's just the way I feel. Anyway. If anybody else feels like that, let me know. Or is it just me? It, it might just be me. I could take it. It's fine. I'll take one on the chin. But, baby, I don't want to be forced to go over there. I don't like going over their house. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Candace and her sister and her mother. Now, you know, this is Candace's stepsister. This is her stepfather's daughter. Her and her mom, her, Candace and her, and Dorothy all got these matching fur coats on and matching bad wigs. I said, ugh, how did that part with all that cat, the sister, that part with all that cake, that makeup, that looks so nasty, so nasty. I was like, how long you been wearing that, sis? That makeup caked all up on that part, that was horrible. But they did, they had three matching coats and three matching balled up wigs, honey. They sitting there, baby, listen, that sister don't have it for Dorothy. That sister gets Dorothy together. When Dorothy was doing that, trying to do that, that girl was like, mm, no, respect has to be earned. This, that thing. She. I said, all right, Eddie. 
<laughs> Candace, you don't need no counseling. You need to hang out with your sister. Your stepsister will show you how to deal with Dorothy because she ain't here for none of Dorothy's bullshit. You understand? Like, girl, bye. Get out of here, honey. I said, wow. I sat there and kikied and laughed. And Dorothy, girl, the daughter, the stepdaughter's part Look about bad is that the eyelashes. How long you been wearing them eyelashes, Dorothy? Because I see three weeks worth of glue right up on top. How long have you been wearing those lashes, Dorothy? They look quite nasty. Quite nasty. Looks terrible. I was like, ugh. I was glad to get done with them, too. I was like, between that nasty part and them damn corroded lashes, I was done with that shit. I was like, ugh. Much as I like a piece of fur, I couldn't even concentrate. Every time Dorothy would blink her eyes, I was like this, honey. Like some, something was going to pop and fly. I was like, ugh, over the food. Mm-mm, nasty. Anyway, um, Karen and her friend Kia, for, she's from D.C., the D.C. area, came up and she was basically showing her, she was unboxing her perfume bottles and stuff. So they was all excited about that. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, Michael sat with Ashley, and she was talking about the dad. And I was like, Michael, you're being completely um, Caucasian at this point. It's over. And he's like, I don't know. Maybe you should try and get. You're being Caucasian. See, is that these are the things that happens in the horror movies when we say, okay, child, something ain't right here. It's time to go, and the and our Caucasian friends say, no, let's go upstairs and see what's going on. Half of y'all go down the basement and see, and half of y'all go upstairs and see what's going on. Baby, James is going out the front door. See, and Michael's giving, well, I don't know, maybe you should try again, or maybe you should have tried some more. It's a wrap, Michael. Go sit down. Anyway, moving on. So this is where all of this stuff went down. Robin had this house show, this open house. So it's been eight months. She got the house done. It looks nice. The house is cute. It's cute, cute little house. But they so shady. They all in their confessionals. Well, they weren't even in the confessionals. They was just on the side. They be talking about the neighborhood. It's about, this ain't the best neighborhood. It's not the best neighborhood. They offered me some gun job outside. I said, Karen! It's like, y'all know y'all on camera, right? Like, why would y'all do that? This girl's trying to sell this house. I said, they are so incredibly shady. Anyway, but um, the house looks good. This cute little house. Um, Giselle came right in the door, literally attacking Monique. I was like, are you kidding me? It was so out of order. And so disrespectful to Robin. We already told you from the door that there was a potential buyer or two in the place. And there was one specific. There was a, a guy who they got to going back and forth doing what they do, fussing about text messages and who likes who and who's been shady over the last three, four years and on and on until the buyer walked out. Baby, Robin, you better than me because I'd have been ready to wring Giselle's neck. She was loud. She wasn't, it was, wasn't inconspicuous at all. She came in and she started the trouble. She got it popped off and it was totally not the time. And this is not the first time. We've heard at least three, four times this season, times where Giselle has overstepped the friend barrier with Robin and Robin's either been thrown under the bus or she's been disrespected or her feelings have not been taken into account at all from Giselle three or four times this season. I'm telling you, friendships like that, at some point, it breaks because somebody's ass gets tired. And it's generally the one that ain't doing all that kind of stuff, which is Robin. Robin makes allowance for Giselle's bad behavior. But you can see her getting very tired. She's getting tired. I'm just saying. Tell me if y'all don't see it. But I see it. 
I see it, and I know it so well. I know it so well, honey. Anyway, um, then Candace, Candace, but did you just sit over there and play like you never threatened Ashley? Candace, if you don't sit your ass down. I was so done. I got so irritated. I didn't have no knife at you. It was a fort. No, baby. It was a butter knife. You threw it. You threw it in our direction. Are you kidding, Candace? Girl, sit down. You're doing the most. Sit down. A mess. A pure D mess. Now, you're doing crazy shit. Just admit it. You just flat out lying. That was a mess. Anyway, we will talk next week, you guys. Later.